It is so important. And so often I hear people, business owners specifically, who don't understand the difference between revenue and profit. So they're thinking that if they're bringing in the revenue, then they're doing really, really well. So quite often I hear business owners talk about, oh, I'm a multiple six-figure business. I'm a seven-figure business, what have you, whatever's going on. But the thing is, when I hear people tell me this, I'm like, okay, I need to understand what your profit is because seven figure businesses can go bankrupt. And I have seen that several times through my career. Financial mismanagement is a huge issue. And if you're not making profit in your business, then that's a red flag. Like the reason why businesses exist is to make profit. And, you know, you're going to need to get in there and change some things. And quite often business owners, you know, when I ask them what their profit levels are, they, they don't know. So this is super valuable information that they need to be aware of. You're listening to the Rich State of Mind Show, the podcast made to make you the total package in the entrepreneurial world and give you what we call a rich state of mind. If you are here looking to learn about real estate investing, marketing, elevating your business and developing your mindset to get to the next level, then you are at the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join our community on richstateofmind.com. Now here's your host, Anthony Ritchie. Hey, Melissa, thank you so much for taking the time on this episode. I think it's gonna be a great one. Some information that people need to hear, especially entrepreneurs out there trying to scale their business. If you could please just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Hi, Anthony. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. So I am a chartered professional accountant and I have over 20 years of experience, but in the last couple of years, I kind of branched off out of the corporate world and went into business for myself. So I am a financial strategist for CEOs. So what that means is I like to help business owners increase their profit margins so that they are keeping more money in their pocket and increasing their net worth. That's awesome. And it's uh, you made it pretty, pretty straightforward. And so we'll start <laughs> off with uh, <laughs> what got you, because I want to, I want to hear a little bit of your story. So what kind of got you into this, this field here, this very important field that I don't think is talked about enough. Oh, it's so important. So when I was working in public accounting firms and, you know, we were doing the books and completing the tax returns for our small business clients, and we would meet with them after, you know, the books were done and we had the tax return completed and we went over some financial strategies for them within their business. And I could see for, especially for small business owners, they had no idea what we were talking about and they didn't have the understanding that what we were telling them was really good financial information all because they're missing the basic concepts of, you know, not just accounting, but just financial management in your business in general. Mm -hmm. So I knew that there was a gap there, a huge information gap. And I, and I thought, well, you know what, when I go into business for myself, this is exactly what I'm going to offer because I love working with people. I love offering really good advice that they're going to take and they're going to go with and the return on that investment of time and energy it takes into learning this stuff is going to pay them off exponentially in the future, right? So it just, you know, a marriage of love working with people and helping them and using my good business acumen and business sense to help them. And so what is the first step you take to sit down with a CEO of a business when you, when you notice, Hey, look, we can kind of, we could do better here. Yeah. The first thing they talk about is money mindset. What's going on in your mindset? Like, did you have some sort of, you know, childhood trauma around money? Are you, is something holding you back from making those sales that you want to achieve? Like what's going on to make sure that your money mindset is in a positive frame of mind and it's not holding you back because it can hold you back in so many different ways in your business and clearing up those cobwebs, you know, making sure that you're checking in with your mindset on a regular basis, because, you know, one day everything may be great, but the next day it may not be so great and it could be holding you back aware and knowing what's going on and how you present yourself as a business owner is extremely important. And it's definitely an important first step. Otherwise the work that you're about to embark on is not going to matter if you 
if you don't clear yourself of any, you know, issues that may be holding you back. And so you talk about, cause you were talking about sales. So you mentioned about what is better profit or revenue. Uh, mm-hmm. Why is that something that is talked about? It is so important. And so often I hear people, business owners specifically, who don't understand the difference between revenue and profit. So they're thinking that if they're bringing in the revenue, then they're doing really, really well. So quite often I hear business owners talk about, oh, I'm a multiple six-figure business. I'm a seven-figure business, what have you, whatever's going on. But the thing is, when I hear people tell me this, I'm like, okay, I need to understand what your profit is because seven-figure businesses can go bankrupt. And I have seen that several times through my career. Financial mismanagement is a huge issue. And if you're not making profit in your business, then that's a red flag. Like the reason why businesses exist is to make profit. And, you know, you're going to need to get in there and change some things. And quite often business owners, you know, when I ask them what their profit levels are, they, they don't know. So this is super valuable information that they need to be aware of. So you you talked about financial management as a CEO, business uh, entrepreneur, understanding that. And one thing that I have realized with my uh, real estate investing, especially during COVID was having, having a savings and getting creative, but first having a savings is what saved my real estate investing business uh, during Mm -hmm. those interesting times. And so you talk about, three reasons why a business needs to have a reserve of cash. Uh, what, what is the reason that you pitch? Well, you just nailed the first one right off the bat. You know, <laughs> it's so important to have a cash reserve on hand to get you through the hard times because yeah, the pandemic was definitely an anomaly. Anol- 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 I can't even say the word, but you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, you know, and hopefully we won't have that experience again, but you know, there is the possibility that that will happen, but no matter what in the market, there's always fluctuations. There's always good times and there's always going to be bad times. So having that cash reserve to get you through those tough times is essential. And then another reason why it's important to carry a cash reserve is for those unexpected emergencies that you have in your business, things that you couldn't have planned for. So, you know, depending on what type of service or, or products that you're offering, if you have a surprise expense and you don't have the ability to to repair that and it's holding a production line or whatever the case may be, then you've got a serious problem in your business. So it's always smart to have cash reserves. So whether you've got, if, if you're in the financial position and you're not starting off right away and you've, you've been in business for a while and you've managed to create that cash reserve for yourself, that's fantastic. But if you're not, you need to make sure that you've got access to cash that can get you through those hard times. So what you want to do is make sure that if you need a line of credit for your business, Mm. that you would apply for it during the good times. Because when the bad times roll around, that's the worst time you can be asking the bank for any sort of money or credit line of credit. Uh, So when you say line of credit, you mean uh, like a credit card or just, or sometimes I've seen like where they have. Uh, lines of credit where you can just pu- kind of pull it from an uh, account like the bank will provide you an account that has kind of a line of credit yeah uh, pr- preferably whatever you can find with the lowest rate of interest is okay. the best means typically credit cards are like at 19.99 percent interest highly recommend staying away from those because those are the second worst um, debt vehicles that you could get involved with. So if you can find something with the lowest rate of interest to help you get by and not only just have that line of credit or access to credit available, but make sure that you're going to repay it because that is super important. Carrying debt costs a lot of money. And if you don't make it a priority to pay that money back that you've borrowed, you're essentially just burning away your money with interest payments. Yeah. That's good to know. I think that would have actually saved a lot of people if they had a line of credit uh, mm-hmm. and, and had established it, before, obviously, during the good times before the pandemic. Where exactly. Got, uh, and while they're going through the pandemic, figure out a bounce back plan so that they could pay that back. Exactly. I mean, unfortunately, these things happen, but it's all in the strategy of getting yourself through these bad times that, you know, makes it less stressful. Just making sure that you're prepared, because no matter what, the bad times will come, right? Yes. Typically, a recession is on a 10 year cycle. Um, so, you know, you, you may not know exactly when it's going to happen, but you can expect that another one will happen at some point. Yes. So that's best to prepare. So let's just say I don't repair. I mean, I don't prepare. And, uh, and that's considered one of my mistakes. How can I 
how can somebody, a business owner, move past uh, certain mistakes in order to change their future to a more profitable one? Absolutely. I mean, the best thing you can do is, you know, not beat yourself up. Everybody makes mistakes and you need to create a financial plan to get you from where you are to where you want to be. So in accounting terms, this is typically called an operating forecast where you're forecasting 12 months, like you're projecting 12 months ahead of time, right? Mm -hmm. And you're creating that plan. So you've got your business goals in mind. You know what revenue that you want to achieve. You create that financial plan to ensure that you are, you've got all the revenue that you, you um, are lining up for each and every month and the expenses because creating sales costs money. So you need to list all the expenses that are related to your business and ensure that you have projected profit. And if you haven't, you need to start massaging these numbers and finding a way to make your business more profitable. So whether that's increasing the number of sales or increasing the pricing or decreasing your expenses are a combination of all of that, but you need to make sure that you are going to be in a position to be making money for your business. And if you don't map that out, then you're seriously just, you know, kind of circling around and not really having a plan and nothing will ever get better. And so you, you talked about operating forecasts. I'm, I'm assuming we will just say at the beginning of a fiscal year or calendar year, however people keep up with their money. You know, uh, if somebody comes to see me in June, we're going to do that for 18 <laughs> months in advance, right? Gotcha. So, you know, in a perfect world, it would be January to December if that's your business fiscal year. Yeah. But, you know, you want to make sure that you've got a plan for the next month and going forward, even for the next day, right? Just making sure that you get that plan, those numbers out. So, because quite often what happens is when people start planning out their, their revenues and their expenses, that's when they start realizing I'm not making much money. So you need to be on top of that. You need to make sure that you are planning appropriately and understand even your break-even point before you start making profit in your business so that you understand what's going on in your business and every decision that you're making will be an informed decision that's going to be a good decision and affect your bottom line in a profitable way. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. So how often should I meet up with you? If I'm if I'm coming to you as my... Uh you know, um, strategists with helping up the, the increase of our business, yeah. how often should I be meeting up with you? Well, see, I work with people in two different ways. So one is in a coaching way where I'm, I'm teaching you, if you're in a position where, you know, let's say your, your business doesn't require, um, you know, like a, a lot of in-depth analysis or you, you need to, um, like, Okay, let me rephrase. I work with people in two different ways where one is a fractional CFO and one is as a business coach, right? So, okay. So I teach, when I'm coaching, I teach my business owners to know the routine and how to set themselves up for financial success. Now, as a fractional CFO, I work and I do that work for you. And I meet with you on a monthly basis to let you know what's going on in the business and how your KPR, KPIs are doing and how you can either make improvements, capitalize on things that are going really well, or maybe, um, you know, things that aren't, so, aren't going well, you know, you're making improvements on them. So okay. there's two very different ways that I work with people. Okay. And, and what are some management, uh, money management tips that you provide in order to help uh, these businesses scale? that goes right back to that financial plan as well, because growing and scaling your business, everybody thinks that's a really great thing to do. But the thing is growth can be very risky if it's not planned out well. Okay. So if you're growing your business too quickly, you need that capital infusion to make sure that you're keeping up with, you know, like if you're selling products, you need to keep up with payments to suppliers and such. And there might be a lag between what you're initial cash outlay is versus what's coming in, right? So it costs money to create your products, but you're going to get that money back once you sell them. So you have to be very careful in planning for anything, right? So making sure that you've got that financial plan in order to make sure that you're growing. And not only are you being profitable as you grow, but you're maintaining your profit margin. So if you were operating at a 20% profit margin before you start growing, you're going to want to maintain that minimum profit margin each and every month or increase it. You definitely don't want to decrease that profit margin. So I'm actually, I'm a business major. And I remember one of my classes, we had to do a financial analysis of a company. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And it was this was back when Amazon was really blowing up, like really okay. fast. Because I think it was like 2012, 13, when Amazon okay. was really starting to expand. And I saw that, and I'm assuming this is the case for a lot of companies, because if you don't have the capital, then you have to loan, you have to get bill liabilities so that you can keep up with your growth. And that's what I noticed with these companies that grow really fast in a short amount of time to just blow up is they don't have the capital to keep up with the sales. So they have to outsource. And so, yeah, yeah, the the scary thing is like, yes, we're making a billion dollars, but I'm also paying 800 million in my liabilities. Exactly. So if I have one bad year, I'm screwed. Probably one, maybe one bad quarter and I'm not looking the best. And so that is, I think that is true. What you just said. I think that's something to definitely look into. Like, yes, great, we're growing, but we kind of maybe need to tailor ourselves a little bit or do a risk assessment. And it made me think about, uh, there was one entrepreneur I know that they did pre-orders before a product came out so that they knew that they could, how much they could, uh, how much they needed to, uh, how many sales they made and yeah. how much, if they were going to make enough to pay for their provider. So, Super smart. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty smart. Yeah, for sure. Before yeah, a product actually launched. a good launched. idea of what's coming in. And I noticed they do that with video games, um, books. Those are the first things that kind of come to my mind, uh, yeah. <laughs> pre-orders. So I thought that was pretty cool for anybody that is worried if you're launching something new that you're not completely confident or sure how, how much it's going to cost. A pre-order doesn't hurt. That way yeah. you already got the funds up front to provide for the products that you need to um, uh, mail out. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I like, I like, I like talking about this type of stuff. Uh, Me too. I, I think uh, I think wealth strategy. So a lot of us, we want to be wealthy. We we want to be successful, uh, mm-hmm. and we may know how to apply in in a high ticket skill that we have. So I may be very good at being an artist, and I want to. I'll give a better example because that's kind of a one one man show. I may be very good at uh, designing clothes, and I want to make it into where I have my own boutique, but. I may not be very good at figuring out how to scale my business to another store or how to delegate to do other uh, jobs in that boutique, in that, in that, uh, in the clothing industry. I just know how to be, I'm just a very good, talented clothing designer. Mm -hmm. And so topics like this really help hit one. I think one of the most important aspects of, you know, growing a business uh, especially how you talk about growing a business from six figure to seven big seven figures, which I'm assuming is is that like the hardest hump you've seen the, for businesses to get is going from six figure to seven figure. Ironically, no, I think it's harder to get to that six figure mark oh, than okay. it is to to go from six to seven. Awesome. Is it because yeah. if you just keep applying what you did to get the six figures, you'll get the seven figures eventually? Um, well, you know, when you're building your business and you're trying to get to six figures, you're still in that learning stage too. And you're learning what works and what doesn't. And, you know, you bring up a really good point as a business owner. I mean, chances are you've gone into business because you want to, you know, showcase the skill that you're really good at. So whether you're a fashion designer or whatever, um, that's what you're really good at, but the actual Um, management of a business is something that you likely were never taught. So there's a lot of, a lot of uh, growing pains with the business and learning, you know, what's going to sell, what works, what doesn't, how to manage your business, how to manage your finances, all sorts of problems arise. And it's just, you know, getting, getting through those first couple of years is statistically the hardest for business owners. Okay. Next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, you talk about financial management holds back wealth. Uh, what are some other things that you've noticed, which you being a partial CFO and coach that holds back companies from being able to build that wealth? Um, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by holding back wealth. Uh, so uh, one of your, one of your uh, suggested questions you mentioned about uh, personal finance management yeah. uh, holds back uh, from wealth. Okay. Yeah, Yeah. I totally understand. Um, So what happens is like, chances are, if you are not managing your personal finance as well, you're probably not managing your business finance as well either. Right. So they kind of play hand in hand. And as a business owner, you're in a very unique position to create the amount of wealth or as little wealth as you want. And a lot of business owners don't see how 
creating wealth within their business will actually help create their net worth. So it's really important to increase the profitability in your business so that you're keeping more money for yourself. You're making your business more valuable and you can transfer that, that value to your personal net worth as well. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for answering that. And so with, let's say with my personal, my, my personal wealth, my personal financial management, uh, you talk about uh, even if you have an in-house accounting support, whether it's, uh, you know, business or personal, you say that you should always outsource for a tax accountant as well. Why, why is that? Um, okay. So first of all, you know, being the CEO of your business, you definitely should always be involved in what's going on in your business in the sense that you understand Uh, You're looking at your your financial reports at a minimum every month. You're measuring your KPIs. You understand where your strengths and weaknesses are in your business. So whether you have a bookkeeper and an accountant, that's completely, totally okay. Um, As long as you're not putting 100% trust into these people that you've you've hired, right? But so if you have an accountant that's working with you, like on a regular, like a a CFO or a fractional CFO, or just even a staff accountant, um, at some point you're going to need a tax expert to ensure that you have, you're using the best possible tax strategies for you. So the reason why I say it's important to work with a tax expert is because these are people who specialize in tax. So they understand the ins and outs. The tax act is huge. Uh, there are a lot of rules, a lot of things to follow. Um, if your accountant is, you know, like me, more of a financial strategist, and they're helping you with the day-to-day running of the business and making it more profitable and stuff, chances are they're not keeping current with the tax act. So it's always important to have that expert come in and help you with your taxes. And it also helps with, you know, a second set of eyes on your books as well. Uh, it when never I, hurts. When should I bring that person in? Is this like an annual audit I should do on myself? Well, it's it depends, right? It depends on what stage you're at in your business. So smaller businesses tend to have a bookkeeper and then visit their tax accountant, um, you know, on an annual basis to get their tax return done. So as long as they're, you know, like this tax accountant is proficient in looking at your books, reviewing them, making sure that they're they're up to, you know, status quo. And then they'll do your tax return. But if you're a bigger business and, you know, maybe you're at the seven figure level and um, it's just become very, you know, hard to manage and you have um, a CFO in there full time or on a part time basis, um, that's super helpful because that'll help you get through. And I kind of lost my point here. So I apologize. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, no, just uh, just as far as you know, when when do you deploy these these type of services? Oh yes, these, exactly. These experts. Yeah. So then, typically, what happens is when you're a bigger business, you always use a separate tax accountant. So gotcha. it's just it just depends on your size and what your need is and within your business. Okay. And so uh, when it, you mentioned about speak because we're we're talking about the the bigger aspect of business, and we're definitely this has been a topic of when this business person uh, is outsourcing to the professionals and not trying to pretend like they know what they're doing uh, to, in order to maintain the stability of their business. Uh, mm-hmm. It's super so important. I would look at it as that a- alleviates more time for the entrepreneur to focus more on what they're crafting on their expertise, but exactly. you're all, uh, but you also think that they should be focusing on uh, understanding their business as well. What's your thoughts on that? No. So what I mean is if you're a smaller business and you don't have the budget to have somebody in house with you okay. that can help you, um, you need to make sure that you're doing that yourself because every CEO, if you look at the bigger businesses, every CEO has a CFO to advise them. The CFO is like the second um, or the, the right-hand person to the CEO. So we're the trusted advisors. So if you don't have the budget for that, you definitely need to understand what's going on. So that's why your financial education is super important. But even operating as a larger business where you do have a CFO, you as the CEO are responsible for any decision that you make in the business. So every decision lies on your shoulders. So if you're listening to what your CFO is telling you 
and you're not understanding the advice that they're giving, you're putting your business at risk. So that's what I mean. Like you don't need to get into the weeds of understanding, you know, what's going on and who's billed and who hasn't and whatever, like all that nonsense. You don't need to know that, but you need to understand, like you have to look at your, your financial reports at a minimum on a monthly basis, understand if your profit is increasing or decreasing, understanding if, you know, some of your expenses are running away with, you know, just getting too high or what, whatever's going on, you need to understand that. So that when your CFO is advising you on something, you understand why they're advising you and you take their opinion into account, but you have to stand firm in your decision because it is your decision. No, I think that was, uh, that's perfect how you explain that uh, because in leadership, uh, there's no way that we're able to uh, completely one do everybody's job for them yeah and then two uh just the capacity to know all the details of what's going on we're meant to process not hold a bunch of information and exactly uh, there's no way we can be efficient like that so I, I do appreciate how you broke that down yeah and you know another reason why unfortunately these things do happen I don't know if you've heard the story about Dean Cook and trusting all his business management with his brother Oh, no. You talking about the comedian slash actor? Yeah, yeah. No, His brother no. stole everything from him. Oh, wow. He trusted him completely. So and unfortunately, these type of stories are really not that uncommon. And you need to keep an eye on things, not just so you understand what's going on in your business, but you need to protect your business as well. Uh, and so I want to story time a little bit. Uh, what would you say uh, in, in, your, in your career uh, your most, I guess you could say your most, uh, I'm at a loss for words right now, your most accomplished uh, moment in, in your career, like a, a, a business that you're working on, individual you're working with, where you kind of saw the progression in their business. What, what would you say was the best? Uh, oh, that's a really experience? good question because I have worked with a ton of companies and I have seen the success that people have when they understand what's going on in their business finances. But if I take it back to like a basic level where, you know, working with my, my current coaching clients, I see like I, the success is when, you know, I have a woman business owner that comes to me and they really have no idea what's going on in their business mm -hmm. and their personal finances and, you know, showing them step-by-step step what they need to do and seeing them progress and step into that financially confident person and business owner. That to me is amazing because you have turned, like you've just trans helped transform somebody from, you know, somebody who really wasn't taking themselves seriously as a business owner into a flourishing entrepreneur. Uh, I have to make a reference to, I think it was episode 18, Kayla Snaza. Uh, she was really big on, you just mentioned it. You said, uh, treating the business like a business. Uh, she, she's the quote was, if you treat your business like a business, you'll make money like a business. Uh, if you treat your business like a hobby, it'll make uh, money like it's a hobby. It's so true. I love that quote. So I, I definitely, I think that's very true. I, I definitely think about that concept in my head. Uh, when I feel like I want to slack off a little bit because, yeah. uh, you know, okay, a hundred dollars here and there. Okay. Then there, that is a hobby. But if you want to make two, three, four, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a year, uh, a month, then yeah. uh, that's when, you know, you've, you're transforming and you're definitely making progress. Exactly. And, you know, there's so much opportunity as a business owner to increase that revenue. You know, it just depends on how committed you are to it. And then you say, you, you said you also provide coaching services. Uh, yeah. where can, how can people uh, reach out and, and, and look up your coaching services? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can find me on my website at melissahoustoncpa.com and under offerings, there's information on the coaching services and the fractional CFO services that I offer. And so why would I want to hire you as a coach, vice, partial CFO? What, what different, what type of different services I'm going to get from that? Well, if you are a business owner who is just starting out or your income levels are, you know, typically under the seven figure point, 
And you need to understand what's going on in your business. You need to hire me as a coach so that I can show you how to do it. And you save money and you learn these skills yourself while you're growing your business. But once you get to that point where it becomes no longer manageable for you, that you can't do it alone and you need the help of a professional, that's when you would be like, okay, I need somebody to come in on a fractional basis, which means it's very part-time and they're there to ensure that the financial management in your business is being adhered to and that you are making smart business decisions. So it's the difference between having um, that information taught to you and you can do yourself versus having somebody who can do it for you. Right. So even though I, as a fractional CFO, I would offer these services and do it for my clients. I still coach them. Right. Yeah, so, cause I don't want to, to just give them information and they're just going to consume it and not understand what we're talking about. So the coaching is still there with fractional CFO, but it's just, I'm, I'm more involved in creating the financial reports and the cash management and, you know, bank reconciliations and dealing with banks. And there's just so much more of a hands-on role that I take as a fractional CFO versus the coaching. And so I like the fact that you provide ground level assistance so that I can eventually get up to where I have you as a partial CFO. And then obviously once I get big enough, then I, then I know what to expect out of a full-time CFO because I exactly. got that, I got that uh, work with you, got to work with you from all the way up. So I like that progressive uh, coaching slash advisory that you provide. I think that's a great transition actually. Yeah, I love it. I love helping my clients and seeing them grow like that. And so I got I got one last question for you that I, I always like to ask everybody. And it's we call it out what's your rich state of mind, which is your big why. Why do you like doing this? You've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, I see the smile on your face when you talk about it. Uh, for those that can't see, she's been smiling the whole episode. Uh, so uh, why do you like doing this? I love helping people. So my first career is actually in social work. Oh, okay. And yeah. Ah, and, it's all making sense now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I quickly learned that you can't make a whole lot of money in social work and it's a very high burnout career path. So for whatever reason, I, I went into accounting and just using this, um, like this money expert status that I have, like I've worked for 20 years in all financial, like personal finances and business finances. So to teach people and help them to improve their lives in that way, it's just such a rewarding feeling for me. So that would definitely be my big why. And I, for anybody that wants to, that wants to know my opinion on it, I think there's nothing better to have someone on your team that is passionate about what they do because they will go the extra mile uh, when you, when you need that, you need people on your team that love what they do. Not somebody dragging their knuckles, coming into work every day, so true. Uh, not really enjoying <laughs> what they do at all. You will not get the optimum amount of uh, produ productivity. Uh, and that goes for yourself as well. Don't do anything that you just won't see yourself doing for 20 years and still having a smile about when you talk about it. And so yeah. uh, where else can anybody uh, find you? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn is a big one. Melissa like Houston LinkedIn. CPA. Yeah. yeah. LinkedIn and um, Instagram, same handle, Melissa Houston CPA. And on Twitter, it's Melissa H CPA. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, uh, Melissa. This has been uh, nice uh, information. And I think I've actually taken some notes myself. And that's when I know the episode is really good because I, I want to take notes for myself personally. Awesome. And I think people will uh, definitely uh, enjoy this episode. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun. Thank you for sticking with us from the start of the episode. Please share our show with friends and family, visit our YouTube channel, and view more of our content on richstateofmind.com. See you next week on the Rich State of Mind show.